beautiful sisters and welcome back to HB Ministries. Welcome back to the Bloom Study. We are entering into week four. Wow, this is just like flying by. So what I want to do is just start off and give you an introduction to week four and some basic themes. And then we are going to look over day one and two together. This is the day that we come and just sit in the workbook pages so you understand the pages and how to study the Word of God a little bit better. All right, so first of all, week four. I'm going to pull up our notes right here, and week four is all about blooming where you are planted. Now, I love the idea that I went ahead and I put a frog on a lily pad. I'll tell you where this is stemming from. If you've been around and you've done the frog study, Fully Rely on God, You'll know why I chose to use frogs in lily pads. Well, this past winter when we went to Florida, we went to a botanical garden. And one of the features were the ponds and the lily pad ponds. And what was interesting was seeing the roots. And it seemed odd to see a lily pad garden, but there was a purpose for that lily pad. And then I often think of the frogs and how often they land on a lily pad and how that pad in that little pond has a purpose for its blooming. Well, God, no matter where we are blooming, has a purpose. And in week four, you're going to begin to see that you are going to bloom where you're planted. But a lot of times it's our perspective. It's our perspective. If you follow me on Instagram just yesterday, I posted a picture of a crack in the ground in a weed that just came up from a crack. And then I walk over and I see my beautiful garden and I think, well, what are you doing here, weed? I mean, how did you take seed right in the middle of a crack, dry ground, heated, hot ground? This isn't where you're supposed to grow. Amen. And then there's times where you have to dig that weed, that seed out and replant it in the right place. Well, God could be doing those type of things in your life. He could be saying, you're blooming but you're not blooming in the best place. I want to replant you over here. Or you're blooming and this is part of your walk. Now, a few stories that you can read in the Bible, especially one that I loved that I put in your intro here, was, was when Jesus came and talked to the, emo the emotionally wounded sinful woman at the well. He was able to see, first of all, her sin and her choices, but he was also able to see beyond that. He sees beyond our situation where we may be blooming. He sees past that. It's almost like he says, I see a better garden. However, we're going to do the work we need to do here. He always says, your faith has saved you and your faith has made you whole. And that is a process of him working and repositioning, or let's say replanting, uprooting and replanting. So with that in mind, there's a couple things that we need to do. In day one here, it says bloom where you're planted, but specifically in day one, it's telling us to embrace where you are at. It's saying be still and know that I am God and embrace. And as you begin to read a little bit more, we're not going to so much do the work pages here. I'm going to really focus on day two, but I kind of want to talk to you about day one so we can connect these all and then play in our work pages. In day one, it is really letting us know a little bit of a secret. The verse that we studied here had a secret and the verse was Philippians 4, 11 through 12. And it says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need for I have learned to be content. Keyword content. Whatever the circumstances, wherever you're blooming, if you're in the crack in the sidewalk and God found you there and you're just crossing the line of faith and realizing that you're seeing the light and this is not how I'm to bloom, this is not the garden I'm supposed to be planted in, I remember being there. And you think, why would I, why would I grow here? And God begins to relocate you because you were made whole. Your eyes were opened through your faith and you get to go in the best garden ever. Amen? But... When you get transplanted, 
you're rerouting yourself. Amen. And I remember when I crossed the line of faith, rerouting friendships, rerouting the way I think, rerouting the way that I would speak, all of that rewiring, if I may say. This is where I learned to be content because in that circumstance, I was growing but maturing in my faith. So that's just one scenario of understanding your circumstance. But the key for Philippians was learning the secret. Learning the secret to be content in any circumstance. And how are we content? By being rooted. If we go back to our past uh, week studies, by being rooted in Christ. Another thing that I loved about Philippians is being content in the circumstances just doesn't come right after you cross the line of faith and you, 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 I'm a believer now. The spirit of God lives in me. I'm content. No, it, you grow in contentment through personal experience. And you'll see that in here, that your personal experience is what's going to help you learn contentment. Contentment comes from maturity and wisdom. So I hope you had some fun doing your pages. Again, for the sake of time today, I just kind of wanted to go over that, but you did have your daily devotional and you did have your Bible study chapter study for day one where you could dive in, really look at some keywords and look at different translations. My keywords, I'll just tell you briefly, for day one was contentment self-sufficient, a secret. Gosh, I love that God used the word secret in the Bible. Like there are secrets hidden in his word where we can live a better life, live in a better garden, if I may. Another key word is empowers me. He infuses me. There's an inner strength. There's a confidence. The one who makes me who I am, he will strengthen me. Wow. Loved everything about Philippians uh, that we got to study today. Now, let's go ahead and look at focusing your energy. When I talk about energy, I'm talking about spiritual energy. Your everyday energy, your everyday rhythm and routine is going to give you the energy to have the right perspective. It's going to give you the energy to be content following along with day one. So in day two, what we want to do is we want to look at the passage and then see what does it mean by having focused energy. Well, the passage for today is Psalm 1, 2 through 3, and it says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night? That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Whatever they do prospers. So as we turn the page, I love this in this workbook that I put there for you. You will see on the left here that there are practical ways to focus your energy. Practical ways. And I hope that you take a look at this and just say, am I staying rooted in God? And it's so amazing that when we go to church on Sunday, which you have your sermon notes here in your book, I love when God uses my sermon or my pastor to speak into what I'm studying. Well, this past week, our sermon was on being in the truth, walking in righteousness. And when you are in the truth and truth is a person, you are going to see the wise way of living. And he was talking about being rooted and he was talking about blooming in the right circumstances. And then he gave us a challenge. And the challenge was, how, how much time are you spending growing on social media and how much time are you spending knowing truth so that you can divide right and wrong, that you can walk in this world and live your best life? And as I was listening to everything, you know, he said, we scroll through social media, we scroll here, we get lost and go through a rabbit hole here. But how often are we praying? How often are we reading scripture every day? How often are we meditating and reflecting on that one word, really making observations on what we're studying for that day when we opened up the verse. Not just a little foofy devotion, or but really studying. How are we fellowshipping with other believers? How are we serving others? How are we practicing gratitude? How are we seeking spiritual growth from other people, counsel from other people, not just through social media? How are we staying accountable? And how are we remaining open to God's leading. These were some of the things that I posted here. Now, the challenge is, 
how much do we do this on a weekly basis versus maybe scrolling? And that's going to help you understand where your contentment levels at. If you were to kind of see, oh, I'm kind of on empty with contentment and you want to fill up, try practicing these things and you'll begin to see your contentment in your circumstance and you will also understand that you have an energized focus on what God wants you to focus on in that season where he is blooming you where you are planted. And so I loved today's verse. If we can, let's go ahead and take a look at our Bible study chapter page today. And if you have that open, in the little pink square at the top, I always write the theme of this week. And the theme of this week is bloom where you are planted. And then in the little box under that, the main theme, that is the main theme for today. Today being, we're studying the Old Testament, the book is Psalm, and the chapter is one, verses two through three. And the main theme here is to bloom where you're planted, but to be sure you have a focused energy, a focused energy, have the correct perspective. And how do we do that? And so you're going to chop down, chew on, and really divide the word of God so that you can see that. So the first thing that I do is I look up a couple translations. I looked up the message and I looked up the amplified. The message stated, instead you thrill to God's word. I loved the word thrill. So I, I put that down. I just loved it. You Instead, you thrill to God's word. You chew on scripture day and night. You're a tree replanted in Eden, bearing fruit, never dropping leaves, always in bloom. Is that not one of the best verses ever? Then I went ahead and I looked up the Amplified. And that said, he delights in its law habitually. That's a rhythm and routine right there. Habitually meditates day and night. Firmly planted tree, which means securely rooted in the right soil. Everything that we talked about. No withering, always prospering. Keywords, wise leader. Meditates, examines, desires, thrilled. Habit, routine, bearing fruit, and prosperous. Now, one thing I want you to do is look at verse one. Realize I didn't include verse one, but one thing I always teach my students is to always, whatever verse I gave you to study, go to the verse before and go to the verse after and sandwich it in and see. See if there is a correlation or maybe there's an opposite. A lot of times God will bring the opposite and then tell you what you need to do. And that's the case in this scripture. You'll see that in verse one. This is the key. In verse one, it says, blessed is the woman that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, but, and then we get into our verse. So here you see the righteous and the unrighteous. This is how you're going to have the right perspective in blooming where you're planted. You cannot be the person that's walking around in the counsel of the ungodly or tied up in the news of the world and and scrolling in all the social media. You have to know where you're finding your counsel. Again, going back to the list that we just talked about. Your challenge. How much are you spending time in that? When you do, it says, but... If you delight in knowing God, if you have a thrill, if you have an enthusiasm of getting to know him, then, then you're going to experience true happiness. You're going to experience the right garden. You're going to be transplanted. And while you're going through something, while you're going through trial, while you're going through suffering, while you're going through confusion, you're going to have the right perspective Okay, a good inner circle spiritual perspective that God is going to put over you, a favor, a blessing that he'll put over you to understand what is going on, which means you're going to be given contentment in that circumstance. Amen. And that is going to help you stay rooted. It's the secret. And so as I went ahead and I just wrote down some observations here, I wanted to share five things with you today, and it's going to start with a righteous life. So you're going to repeat a righteous life, a righteous life, a righteous life, and then two more times. And what I want you to see is that God wants you to bloom where you're planted, and he wants you to live a right life, but it's going to take a perspective focus. 
you, you need to have the right perspective. You need to be in the right inner circle. You need to do some of the things that we shared in our list. And then you're going to experience true happiness. What is that going to look like? When you're blooming where you're planted, what could that look like? Number one, a righteous life is blessed. Psalm 1-1 tells us that right there. We started with that. It said, blessed is the woman. Blessed is Heather. Blessed is, put your name in there. Blessed is the person that is walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, not in the world's ways. There's the truth and then there's the darkness. And God pre-wired us to know truth. We are created in his image to know truth. But the world and the enemy wants to steal that from us every chance he can. So we need to make sure we're stepping into that inner circle and doing some of those points that I shared with you. Another thing is a righteous life avoids sin, avoids wickedness, and avoids temptation. How is that looking for you? You can see that right in Psalms 1, 3 through 6. Number three, a righteous life is in sync with God's law, is in sync with God's law. You will see that in Psalm 1 through 2. Meditates on his law day and night. Meditates in sync with God's word. How are you in a rhythm and routine? How are you making it a habit to stay in sync? Those who are in sync are going to experience a righteous life, a blessed life, a happy garden. All right, and let's look at number four. A righteous life is fruitful and prosperous. Things aren't dying. Things aren't falling off. Life isn't withering. You may go through circumstances in your marriage, but you're going to have a perspective that God's going to heal. You're going to have a perspective that God's going to bring favor, that God's going to bring an anointing, that God's going to teach you what you need right where you are at. Amen? If we fully rely on God. I love going back to this. We fully rely on God by staying on our lily pad. Think of those uh, points that I just shared with you, the 10 points, uh, the practical ways to stay focused and have the right energy as a lily pad. How many lily pads can you check off during the week? A righteous life is secure in God. A righteous life is secure in God. God. So you can go ahead and write them in this space right here. I always like to have a fun space where you can write notes or write your verse out, whatever you want to do here. Maybe you did your own Googling and studied some other things. This is your page to have fun. All right, sisters, that is day one and two of week four, learning to bloom where you are planted. So whether you're on a lily pad, whether you're in the crack in the ground, God has a purpose and sees beyond that. He's getting you ready to maybe transplant you. Maybe he's pulling up some roots in your life and you're working on that. And once he gets to those bottom roots and really pulls them out, he's going to be able to put you where you need to be. But it's all a process. Be content. Get mature in this Get, get spiritually mature in that circumstance. That's the secret. And you'll see God do amazing things in your life. All right, sisters, don't forget, Wednesday's the podcast. Friday, we are live here on YouTube, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will wrap up all of week four. And then we will launch week five next week. So thanks again for being here. I also have an awesome video that I'm just posting, and it's all about why we study God's Word. So if you are watching because you're part of this study, be sure to head over to my YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos that will, that'll keep you stirred and empowered in your faith walk. Thanks, sisters, for being here. I love you, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye. I couldn't see colors. It was all in gray Till you showed me every shade Your mind.